The skeleton of the structure reaches five stories above the shaking table. Square concrete columns wrap around reinforced steel bars. UC San Diego graduate student Michelle Chen surveys the tower. Everything is full size, so it's the same size columns you would see in a normal building. It's basically the core of a whole structure. Life size, except for the size of the floor plan. After all, the building is sitting on top of an earthquake simulator. And there are some other differences. As you can see, um, the first two levels, they look pretty much the same. And then the third level up there, which is what we call our fourth floor, there's some strands sticking out. The columns, floors, and ceilings are all wired, so researchers can measure how the structure will react to earthquakes. All the rebar in the, in the beams have little gauges on them that have the wires connecting out, and we're measuring the deformation inside of the beams, too. But it's not the beams, columns, or floors that are the main focus of this project. It's the rest of the building they're interested in, like office walls and ceiling panels. Lead researcher Tara Hutchinson stands underneath the huge metal platform that the building is sitting on. It's here that huge pistons will actually simulate an earthquake. We have a pair of actuators on either end, large hydraulic actuators that can, that can push and pull the system at dynamic rates. They can simulate mild earthquakes or strong ones, and in this case, they'll do both. Hutchinson says she wants to know how quakes will affect a building's plumbing, wiring, and things that are there but not necessarily vital to a building's structural integrity. Builders can put that knowledge to use immediately. You have plumbers, uh, electricians, um, you have a ceiling contractor, you have a, a wall contractor, for example, an interior wall contractor. So each of those trades needs to learn and benefit from um, the results of a testing program like this. Hutchinson says 70% of the cost of a building is tied up in non-structural components. Building those things so they don't fail when they're under stress can save a lot of money after a big quake hits. Researchers already know a lot about how a column like this will perform during an earthquake or a floor or even a ceiling in a structure like this. What they don't know a lot about though is how a structure like this will perform in an earthquake. This is an elevator shaft. They want to make sure that an elevator like this will be working when they're done with an earthquake test. UCSD graduate student Ali De Pantoli says having a hospital elevator that works after a major incident can be a lifesaver. After a major earthquake, you want your hospital to be functional. You want it to work. It's not that it's not, not collapsed. You really want it to work perfectly, 100%. So this is what we're trying to achieve, to see if it's working after the earthquake. Researchers say they'll test the tower with several smaller quakes before they shake the structure with a major shock. That'll help them see if there's cumulative damage that might compound a problem during a major earthquake.